I'm Ainsley McFarlane, a native Bedeck, born and raised here. Yeah. Went away long enough for a uh, university education, but the bulk of my life has been here. Yeah. My father was a, um, a mechanic and he operated a local service station. And uh, my mother raised six children and she also did uh, secretarial work for the garage and uh, she had a few jobs. She reported for the local newspaper at that time and uh, she was the uh, pathometer of the uh, court. Yeah, and, they, and they're very active community people, both of them. And they instilled that in every one of us. Since my official career, it's, it's always been with Parks Canada. So I was 36 years with Parks. And before graduation, um, summer jobs were sometimes um, lab work for um, Devco and the uh, fish farm business or working in local stores, that type of thing, right. you know. It was the Bell National Historic Site. Mm -hmm. But it, um, that site is what, well, they used to call an area site which meant we had responsibility for um, all national historic elements on Cape Breton Island and three counties on the mainland of Nova Scotia, Guysboro, Antigonish, and Pictou counties. So our field of responsibility was quite large. So if there was a, uh, an Historic Sites and Monuments Board ceremony and uh, if the, a site was being plaqued anywhere in that area, it was through our offices at the Bell site. Well, I started as, um, uh, I think the title was Guide Supervisor, and titles would change and responsibilities would change, so uh, I worked my way through the system uh, and worked my way through responsibilities and ended up my last uh, 15 plus years were uh, as superintendent. And in this community in general, there's always been an interest in in the past and then taking care of it and preserving it. Uh, my parents, both mother and father, were very influential. But what influenced me to, uh, to go into that particular job is that when I came out of university, I didn't have any training in that area. I never took a history course or anything like that. It was all science and lots of English. That, those were my studies in uh, at uh, Dalhousie, but um, there was an interview for that position of guide supervisor. I'd never worked there or whatever, so bold as brass, I took the interview and it was for a year round position. So, and that, that was just about the time when jobs were becoming pretty slim and hard to find, you know, right across the country. So, uh, I was lucky enough and they were foolish enough that they gave me the job and I stuck to it. Yeah. When I, when I started at the, uh, the Bell site, we were one of the few uh, attractions on the island, really. Uh, I know that's hard to believe now. When, when people come now, there, there, there are so many things for them to choose from. But um, the site was... In 75, 56. It was 19 years old when I started working there, and now it's 50 some years old. But um, Lewisburg was really just coming on strength, um, and a lot of uh, other attractions were, were really just developing. So we enjoyed an incredible number of visitors coming to our door, and it was a different time for travel too because um, things like motor coach they were at their peak and um, the the first well the first two decades I was there it was nothing to have 20 to 30 tour buses a day plus the independent travelers mm -hmm. so an average day would be well especially in July August we would have easily 2,000 visitors a day. We, we tried to see how many times we'd get 2,500. Now, 
it's it's down to uh, I think it's seldom that we have a thousand visitors in a day. It's, it's certainly different. We we don't have the young families in the community that we used to. It's it's a retirement community now for the most part. And uh, um, but th there has been a, a concerted effort to maintain some of the the older structures that define the the village. In particular, I think of the um, what we call the old post office, mm -hmm. um, and um, the fact that it literally had one wall fall down, an exterior wall, and mm -hmm. and there was a group formed to raise the funds to put it back together, and they did a marvelous job. When when I was uh, in my youth, uh, the mail used to come twice a day, but it came on what we call the mail boat. The boat would go, there's no train on this side of the lake. So the mail boat would go over to um, Iona and meet the train. And they would come back with freight and mail and, uh, yeah, twice a day. Now we uh, get the mail once a day, five days of the week. <laughs> In good traveling weather. <laughs> Once it stopped being the post office in the uh, late 50s, I believe, or early 60s, I'm forgetting my dates now, um, it was uh, the library, the local library. And, uh, and that's sort of a unique set of circumstances. The library in Bedeck, it's, uh, it's run by a board of directors, Bedeck Public Library Board. But, um, or they, I think they're now called a society, Bedeck Public Library Society. And the Cape Breton Regional Group are more involved than they used to be. The last number of years they always were involved, but there's, there's better funding through the, the county than there used to be. The uh, library board used to have to go it on its own. And the board is well over 100 years old now. I would say it's about 120, 125 years. Yeah. And bells were involved with it, but it was a, an initiative that was in the works and they contributed their, their name. And, and Mrs. Bell in particular, uh, when, the, when the library started, uh, she provided the building on the main street and uh, a substantial number of books that were on the shelves were compliments of the Bell people, family. Yeah. The descendants of the Bells, uh, some of them are very active in our community and um, very supportive of the community. There's that whole support system and every community now looks to its residents to accomplish a lot more. Mm -hmm. And uh, the workforce, so to speak, just isn't there. Uh, many of our summer people are very uh, very good to uh, support causes and and in some cases they're on boards um, the library board in particular and uh, another that comes to mind is the Burdor Lake uh, Preservation Foundation and that's uh, instrumental in that one is a man by the name of Grosvenor Blair who was a great grandson of Bell. So we're very lucky you know, over a century ago, Bells put us on the map, and uh, mm -hmm. they uh, they continue to to support us. Yeah, the library board is unofficially has been our historic mm -hmm. group. It was the library board that took on the um, the uh, reestablishing of the post office, the old post office. And it was the library board in back in the 70s that started through a summer works uh, project, um, the Victoria County Archives. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started my work as, uh, you know, in, in the heritage field. They hired us for a summer to literally go all over the county looking for pieces and information and photographs or whatever to put in this archives. And it was in the uh, uh, top two floors of the old post office. 
The Bell Museum is rather a unique operation within the within the uh, park system because we have a complete collection on site and we also have an archives on site. Uh, Lewisburg is one of the other few places in the system that has that because normally um, collections would be outside of what's on exhibit, collections would be maintained in a central area. But the m material at the uh, Bell site was given on the condition that it stay in Bedeck, which was very uh, forward thinking of the, uh, of the donors. And then when the, the bulk of the um, archival material came in uh, the late 70s, 1976, 77, and again, the Public Archives of Canada wanted that material, but uh, it was made very um, clear that it wouldn't be coming to Canada at all if it didn't come to Bedeck. Today's present is tomorrow's history, mm -hmm. and I think we're sometimes losing sight of that. We're, we're quite anxious to, to look after what we think is older, you know, uh, key to our early development. And we forget that um, current things are also part of our development. The huge challenge is finding the wherewithal, especially financial wherewithal, to do this. And that is more and more at risk. I, I don't know of any heritage or cultural institution in the world, even if they're in the middle of a huge city or if they're well funded by some foundation, I don't know of any that can survive on the money that comes through the door. And it doesn't matter if it's a Broadway show where they can charge $150 for a ticket, or if it's a local museum where you charge $250. You know, there's no way on earth that they are able to be self-sustaining. I have a huge fear now with the, the recent uh, uh, budget and the, the thinking of this current federal government that everything in terms of heritage is at risk in that way. I can say it now because I'm not employed by the federal government, but uh, Parks Canada, we have massive facilities across the country, and an example is is the Bell Museum. That's, that's a huge operation. And it's expensive to maintain, whether 10,000 come through the door or 100 come through, it doesn't matter. You know, there are things that are happening in terms of the structure and responsibilities for uh, collections management that, you know, if, if it's not funded, you know, as, as funding is reduced, to, to do some of the, uh, the basic work, whether it's structural work. I'm not just talking about Parks Canada now, but um, we, we saw recently uh, funding reduced to the archival uh, program across the country, mm -hmm. you know, and, and um, to uh, summer employment programs, mm -hmm. which, which a lot of times got uh, projects accomplished. And, uh, this idea of, of um, you know, surface treatment just won't cut it because someday the underpinnings are going to come out. I, at this point, the entire province of Nova Scotia is becoming a retirement community, and there's only so much energy there. And, uh, um, you know, everybody has the best of intentions, but that can only last so long, and then... And then what happens, you know? So those are sort of the anxieties I have about it, that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, the, the challenges are just mounting. And the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. every once in a while, though, there's uh, somebody comes in and they have answers and energy and ability to do it, and mm -hmm. they become the godsend for the, the heritage groups, yeah.